Hello, hello everybody, it's Candace Lodre, your favorite family life coach, coming to you this week with your Beyond the Game parent series. So for those that have been tuning in, this is week four. Can you believe it? We're already in week four. And we are discussing the Beyond the Game ebook um, that talks about the emotional and mental needs of an athlete through positive affirmations. So this week we are going to be starting with spiritual growth or focusing on spiritual growth, which um, I'm so excited about because they give me an opportunity to talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hey, hey. <laughs> um, but also too, this is open to anyone that uh, practices any faith. So I do not want to discourage you as far as if um, you believe that this is just focused on Christian beliefs, but um, this is applicable to anyone. So definitely stay tuned, watch, share, comment um, as you watch this video when we go through these affirmations. So this week we are going to focus on affirmation five and affirmation 25. Um, if you have not downloaded the ebook, go download it. It is a resource that you can use many, many, many times. Um, it is a great resource for you to practice as far as practicing uh, positive affirmations, speaking it over your athlete, speaking it over yourself, your family, your friends, etc. Within the ebook, it has a reflection section where you can go in and you can write down as far as your thoughts and comments um, or concerns about the um, affirmations that you practice, the uh, revelations that you've had in your life after practicing these affirmations. So definitely download the ebook. The link is in the comments. So let's get started. Affirmation five reads, our athletes shall not be pressured to fall for anything tempting to destroy, her, destroy or harm him or her. He or she will stay grounded and faithful to their morals and values. He or she will not allow temptation of drugs or alcohol to deter them from living a positive and healthy lifestyle. He or she shall live with integrity and in honor. So with that affirmation, it's pretty much straightforward as far as that we need to be speaking over our athletes to make good decisions as well as to not be tempted from things that is going to try to deter them from living a positive and healthy lifestyle. Um, those that do practice the faith understands that there are principles that they, we should be practicing within our lives that helps us to stay the path. And we have to continue to encourage our athletes to do the same. We can't um, just hope that they will do it or we can't just rely on our example for them to do it. But we have to encourage, not force, but encourage them to do it. And the reason why I emphasize that is when we think about the many, many moons ago when we were younger, um, a lot of times when our parents told us stuff to do, we just looked at it as straight rules, right? We didn't <laughs> we didn't think that they was telling us these things in our best interest. We just thought they were trying to make our lives miserable with all these rules and regulations and so forth. And our kids are no different than us. Our athletes are no different than us. They are thinking that, oh my gosh, they are telling me all of this stuff because they are trying to keep me from living my lit life. And that is not necessarily the case, right? So what we want to do is encourage. We want to provide an atmosphere and an environment that we encourage our athletes to live a positive and healthy life, not by screaming at them or constantly shoving things down their throat but just uh, telling them in a loving and a cool manner. And what I mean by cool manner is talking to them how they can relate to <laughs> whatever you're talking about. You know, not necessarily coming from always an adult authority of perspective, but just talking to them on their level where they understand that, all right, you know, this is obviously something important to my mom to where she or my dad that they're taking the time out to just, you know, speak to me in a level where I understand. So I'm going to take heed to it. So that's what we want to do as far as with encouraging our kids in their, in their spirituality. We want them to be able to embrace their um, faith in a manner that is not something that is just 
you know, forced down or forced on them, but something that they can grow in and learn and walk this journey with you. Because none of us, no matter what faith you practice in, has got this thing down packed. We are all learning and growing in our spirituality every day. And we want our kids to see that and understand that too. So um, as far as to, there was a key thing in here about not allowing the temptation of drugs and alcohol to deter them from living a positive lifestyle. Once again, many, many moons ago, even some of us now today, you know, uh, we recognize that uh, drugs and alcohol can play a serious role in our lives if we allow it to. And, you know, some of us are still struggling as far as to um, get on the right path of moving away from those things. And unfortunately, our kids may see it or our athletes may see it. Some of us have never touched it at all and lived, you know, kind of free of drugs and alcohol and so forth. Whatever path that you're on, you have to understand that you are an example despite of it all. And so um, even if you are the example, we have to understand that our athletes may or may not take to that example too. So while you may have lived a free life of alcohol and drugs, your athlete may not. You know, you're, you will hope that they won't, but they may not take to that example. They may be intrigued to try to try something, try a pill, try, you know, um, some alcohol at a party or so forth for wherever they're in, in an environment, wherever they're introduced to it at. So do not live in a world thinking that just because you never did it, that your athlete won't do it. You know, have those conversations about pills and drugs and alcohol you know there is an epidemic as far as what opioids um we are even going to include uh marijuana in this conversation you know drinking socially to drinking to the point where you're blacked out all of these things happen and they can happen at very early ages. So we do not want to be oblivious to these things. We want to make sure that we are being aware, we're doing our research and we're having these open conversations with our athletes and talking to them about it. Because if we just going off our own understanding, even in a good word, it says that's not a good idea, right? <laughs> so make sure that you're having these important conversations with your athlete. Um, also, too, on the other extreme of things, if you have struggled with addiction with drugs, if you struggle with addiction with alcohol, that is not to say that your ch your children or your athlete will, but it's a um, great possibility. So you want to look to resources that you can receive the assistance that you need. Even if you don't think it's a problem, just double check. Just see, you know, if you feel as though that something is not right, that you're accessing these things to an extreme level um, or to a moderate level, just check it out and see, you know, talk to someone, talk to a um, counselor, um, talk to your doctor, let them know what you're experiencing and they'll put you on the right path on a clear understanding of knowing, okay, this may be a problem and this is something that you want to address. And then in that way, you can even share your experience with your athlete to let them know hey this is the path that I'm on it's not a good path and this is what I want to prevent you from going on and if you do decide to go on that path you best believe I'm going to be with you along the like along the way to make sure that you don't continue on that path we're going to get you the help that you need and if you started on that path we're going to give you the help that you need and we're going to love and submerge you with the resources and the tools that you need to be able to get off of the path of drugs and alcohol. So um, definitely, like I said, we want to pay attention to that and keep in mind that, you know, our youth and our athletes nowadays are dealing with a lot of things that we didn't have to deal with on an extreme level. And so we want to make sure that we're providing them with environments that they can be able to handle these things um, in a positive, healthy, and productive way. So that takes care of affirmation five. Let's move on to affirmation 25, which is, our athlete will be encouraged to embrace their spirituality and cultivate a relationship with God. We will encourage healthy and transparent conversations about temptation and secular ways of living that may interfere with living a righteous life. 
A, as a family, we will be transparent and honest about our spiritual journeys and continue to utilize the word of God to assist us along the way. So this is written from a Christian aspect. Like I said, I know that there are people watching from different faiths, so you can just interchange the words um, as you may. But it's pretty much all I, I feel like applicable to anyone, um, which is we want to encourage our youth to embrace a, um, their faith and embrace their spiritual path and ask questions. You know, I can speak personally for myself. Um, I grew up in a household where we interchange faith a lot. <laughs> and so with that being said, you know, it was like, hey, one day we were Jehovah's Witness. Hey, next week we was Catholic. Hey, next week we was Baptist, you know, and there was never any explanation. There was never a conversation or anything about why we were practicing these faiths and why we were interchanging these faiths. And so now that we are aware, which is our motto, know better, do better, lead better, we want to make sure that we are starting to take what we know and start applying it with where we are. And so, and then in turn will help us to lead the next generation. And so with that, with our athletes, we got to do the same thing. We got to, we got to do things differently. I'm sorry. Uh, we have to be able to talk to them about our spiritual walks, you know, um, we can, as I just said previously, we can talk to them about how we used to, you know, smoke weed or how we used to party or how we used to, you know, do all of these crazy things in the world. But we rarely have really in-depth conversations about our faith, you know, except for more in a dictative type of um, situation, I guess you could say. It's more like, hey... You got to practice this faith because I've practiced it and your grandmama practiced it and your daddy practiced it and his granddaddy practiced it. And it's not necessarily have to be that way. You can help them to understand how you grew your relationship with God. You can help them to understand what questions you've even had with your faith or your spirituality. And then open the floor for them to ask questions. Open the floor for them to be able to say, well, I don't understand why we believe in this or I don't know why the bible says this and this doesn't make sense this seems fictional this doesn't seem real and don't judge them for it you know they're kids most they're kids so even as teenagers you know do not judge them if they say well i don't believe in god because this don't make no sense i ain't believing in talking to somebody that i can't see you know from their perspective and their knowledge it is what it is right <laughs> however um you can give them more um, information on, you know, why they should believe in this thing that you cannot see. You know, why they should believe in this entity that is so powerful and amazing that it can change your life. Sharing those testimonies that we stand up in church and tell everybody and their mama about, but don't have that conversation at the dinner table, that's what's important. Start talking and having transparent conversations about, you know, your faith with your kids and you will begin to see them actually want to embrace and learn more about it. So that is, and also too, I do want to add that, you know, like I said earlier a little bit, or I touched on a little bit, we don't want to also stray away from, you know, expressing the negative things that's happened in our past. Um, with our kids because they're going to grow up thinking that mommy and daddy are perfect, right? And so, but we all know we not. We all know we got a pass, as they say. So we want to make sure that, you know, we're, we're telling our children at their level. We don't want to be talking to our athletes at eight years old like we talk to our good girlfriend or our good guy friend in our 30s, okay? <laughs> we want to make sure that we are expressing to them about the things that have occurred with us on their level so that they're not too exposed to where they're like, oh, Lord, I don't know how to deal with that information, but yet they're informed because it, and be able to make, you know, or be able to create their own perception of who you are and begin to grow closer to you because they understand like, okay, mommy and daddy are sharing these things with me because they care about me and they love me. And they want me to know all aspects of them, not just one part of them. So I hope this um, 
section or week or topic has been um, impactful for you and your family, again, please download the ebook, utilize it, activate it in your life. I promise you, you will see changes at the end. Um, we want to make sure that we are, again, knowing better, doing better, and leading better because our athletes depend on us to be able to give them that blueprint, to be able to be the best versions of themselves they can be. And so part of that is taking care of their needs from a holistic perspective, that's physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So don't forget to check us out at www.fourpointplay.org. That is www. the number four, P as in Paul, T as in Thomas, play spelled out, P-L-A-Y, dot org. We have programs, clinics, trainings, books, apparel, everything you need to take care of your family and continue to live as the best versions of yourselves you can be. Talk to you guys soon and see you next week.